So this video is just a prerequisite for more advanced topics such as uh, factor investing and factor timing. For example, factor timing is just an optimal stochastic discount factor. And we will talk about uh, stochastic discount factor in, in this lecture. So I introduced the book of Cochrane. This is a great professor of finance. Uh, this is a very good book for asset pricing. If, uh, if you want to go to, be, uh, to learn all deepest things about asset pricing. And you know the diamond water paradox of uh, Adam Smith, I think. And so the basic pricing idea is that the marginal utility loss of consuming a little less today and investing the result should equal the marginal utility gain of selling the investment at some point in the future, rating the proceeds. If the price does not satisfy this relation, the investor should buy more of an asset. So when you have high real interest rates, I mean, you have removed the inflation, so you have a real interest rate. The expectation of growing consumption, it means that in future, you will have a growing consumption, not now. In future, you will have that. And in a time of high real interest rates, people go and save in banks and buy bonds and because they expect that you have growing consumption tomorrow in future. So the marginal utility, uh, so utility could be written in terms of consumption. It means uh, income, income minus investment. So you either do investment or consumption. If you have a total income of uh, a finite amount. So given that an asset must pay off well in some states and poorly in the other words, you want assets that pay off poorly in states of low marginal utility when an extra dollar doesn't really seem at all important and you would rather uh, that they pay off well in states of high marginal utility when you are hungry and really anxious to have an extra dollar. So... So consumption, so, so this is the asset pricing formula that I will talk. And everything is dependent on your data and parameters. So the stochastic discount factor, M is stochastic discount factor. Some people say pricing kernel, pricing kernel. So it's just a generalization of the traditional uh, discount factor that you do for pricing different assets such as bonds, mm, options. So this is just the generalization of that because in future, we don't know uh, the sometimes it is, it is a random variable. I mean, the payoff is a random variable. The, the cash flow is a random value for a risky asset. And that's why we approximate it with the stochastic discount factor M at time T plus one. And the basic equation is, is this that, we, that I will prove now. Just for some, uh, for example, I said that P of T at time T, price at time T, is expectation of, uh, of stochastic discount factor at time T plus 1 and uh, X. This is the cash flow at time T plus 1. So price for stock is the price. You know that, uh, and the payoff, uh, for example, you add the price to the dividend. This is the dividend. Another example could be risk-free rate. It means price is one and risk-free rate, the payoff is your risk-free rate. Or even for option. Option is the maximum amount of, this is the uh, uh, spot price at time T, at maturity. And K is the strike price, exercise price. And uh, uh, so people, uh, what to do with their income? They do either investment or consume it. So it's a consumption. So if you increase investment, you have little money to consume. And if you, if you do consume, you have little money to invest. So like an employee. So 
an employee who has a fixed income, uh, he, he really cares about his consumption first. So it has a priority. So increased return to saving reduces the consumption. And this is the Euler equation that uh, we just talked about. And so the problem is we want to maximize utility. Utility, for example, in, term, in, in the context of Markowitz, you say that utility is a function of mu and sigma, and uh, we want to increase uh, mean, uh, we, we want to increase mean of the portfolio and uh, uh, reduce the volatility. So we want to maximize utility. So what we do is that uh, we take derivative with respect to mean of portfolio and with respect to standard deviation, and you get those from formulas for Markowitz portfolio. But here, your utility is in terms of consumption at time t and t plus fund. You want to maximize this fund. This is the typical utility. And uh, when you maximize this, you have an, as I said, you have an income sequence. The, so, so the amount of asset he buys, this is the, but what he has bought. And at time T plus one, you, you have, uh, you have another consumption because it is added. It is additive because you have an added extra uh, payoff. So if you if you take derivative, so if if this is the j the cost j, if you take derivative with respect to the quantity, and uh, take the derivative with respect to quantity, and um, so if you solve that, you get this equation. And because your filtration is up to time t, you can put u prime here easily inside the expectation with no problem. The investor continues to sell or buy until the marginal loss or marginal uh, loss is equal to marginal gain. So the pricing kernel is um, you can you can uh, represent it. It's an abstraction. We don't say what is the utility. We just say it is in terms of utility. For different people, we have a different utility, and no uncertainty case. In terms of no uncertain case, you you just simplify it to this simple equation. And for risky assets, it is obvious that uh, you have risk adjusted discount factor. And uh, for a stock, you know it's just simplified as this this one. And uh, uh, you know the covariance. This is the formula of covariance. And because this one, this term. This term is the price from the Euler equation. That's why we get this equation and simplify it using this one. And use utility in, in terms of this. I mean, M is equal to beta U prime uh, consumption at T plus one, consumption at time T. And uh, so conclusion one, investors do not like uncertainty about consumption. If you buy an asset whose payoff covaries positively with consumption, one that pays off well, then you are already feeling wealthy and pays off badly when you are already feeling poor. So we have a risk correction. If you combine these equation, you get this one. In terms of utility, you get this one. So conclusion two, Assets whose returns co-vary positively with consumption make consumption more volatile and so must promise higher expected returns to induce investors to hold them. So idiosyncratic risk or non-systematic risk does not play a role. So only component of payoff perfectly correlated with discount factor generates an extra return idiosyncratic risk or unsystematic risk because un it is uncorrelated. There is no correlation between that and the discount factor. That's why we have no risk correction. Idiosyncratic risk does not affect prices. That's why our covariance is zero in, in, that, in the case of non-systematic risk. I mean, for example, the CEO changes and it happens to the profit. So this is the non-system. It doesn't uh, care how the market is going. So it doesn't affect the price. 
So expected return beta representation. From, uh, so we proved that this formula, and if you just combine them, you get the beta pricing model. And uh, this is the expected beta representation if you just, this specific utility, you can use util it, any utility, but if you use this utility, you have this equation. And the mean variance frontier, uh, we have, uh, we, 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 we work on this one, and uh, you have a bound on the expected return. So, the, so you have a bound on the ex excess return. This is the excess expect, uh, excess return. And for the efficient frontier, you see that we have such a things and everything. Because, because at each point, a mean variance frontier is perfectly correlated with discount factor. Because they are correlated, when something is highly correlated, you can, you can define such a line, such a linear regression. And uh, so and here we, we show that we have a bound on the sharp ratio. And so we have alternative asset pricing for if you have different utility function, you can define it with general equilibrium models. But if you use it with uh, pricing, factor pricing models, for example, F could be, uh, I mean, it's a value, it's size, it's quality, it's uh, all, it, it, you have 50 different factors, you know, more than 50 different factors. And or you will simply use the cap M. You care about the market and the beta, and uh, so so in any case you you can define your own model of stochastic discount factor. So the difference between arbitrage pricing theory and cap M is that a model is based cap M is based on an inherently unobservable market portfolio. And CAPM describes equilibrium for all assets, but for APT, uh, you can define it for a, for a portfolio as well. For example, you compare it with your S&P 500. And uh, arbitrage pricing theory versus CAPM in different contexts, uh, you have different comparison. For example, APT can be extended to multi-factor models or when APT is possible, when a APT is possible for some individual stocks to be mispriced, not to line on the security market line. And uh, so for APT, arbitrage pricing theory, you can define uh, your uh, return in terms of some factors. And... Uh,